Borderlands 3 has a ton of legendary weapons, and compared to Borderlands 1 and 2, their spawn rate seems to be a lot higher, so I thought in this video, why not cover 10 awesome legendary weapons that you can find right now in Borderlands 3 Part 1. Starting off the video today, we have a legendary shotgun known as the One Pump Chomp, and I have to say, this is one of the best legendaries I have found so far. The weapon itself is manufactured by Jacobs and has decent stats across the board until you get to its additional effects, and that is where the juice lies. These alongside its normal stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level, but the weapon has plus 1160% damage with a plus 28% reload speed, a 3.5 times weapon zoom, and also has another effect that allows a 50% chance to not consume ammo per shot, which means the weapon can sometimes be fired multiple times in succession, and because of the sheer power that this gun puts out, it can truly be devastating. To get this weapon, you will want to be on the planet of Promethea, and you'll need to go to the Electro City region. You go here very early on in the game, so this is a weapon you can pick up early, but once you're in Electro City, you'll want to head over to this location on the map. Just for reference, you can see the spawn point to this location, and once you're here, you'll want to head down into the tunnels. Once in the tunnels, there will be a left turn that you can make that will lead you to a puzzle you're supposed to solve. The puzzle involves the TVs in the back of the hallway and four switches you can use to turn the TVs on. The puzzle is solved when all of the TVs come on at the same time, and the way we did this is to just keep pressing random switches, and we had success doing it this way several times, so I'm sure you guys can pretty much do it this way as well, and you'll eventually get them all to turn on. Anyway, when all of the TVs turn on, an enemy known as One Punch will come out of the doorway, and this is the guy who can drop the One Pump Chomp. Make sure to be careful though, his name is One Punch, and he is no joke. If he hits you once, you are guaranteed to go down, so make sure that you keep your distance, and kill him as fast as you can. This took us a few tries to get, so if you don't get it on your first try, simply reload your game and try again. Next up we have the legendary Skeksel. Now the Skeksel is a children of the vault weapon that shoots a burst of 7 rounds per shot that also shoots 3 elemental projectiles and because of this and also its very good fire rate, this gun is a literal mount machine and one of the better legendaries I managed to obtain. You can get this gun in various different elements and the prefix that I ended up getting was the stabby nasty variant with incendiary as the elemental type. To get this weapon, you'll need to go to the Ascension Bluff region of Pandora. Luckily enough, you start the game on Pandora and can get this weapon very early on. Anyway, once you're in Ascension Bluff, you want to make your way to this location on the map. It's here where you will find one of Sir Hamalak's legendary hunt crew challenges, and the enemy known as Scrack will spawn. This is the enemy that has a chance to drop the weapon. It took me a few times to farm this guy, but luckily he's very easy to farm, as the spawn location for this region is quite close to the location. Overall, the weapon is great and definitely one that you guys will want to pick up. One of the things I love about Borderlands is there's never a shortage of awesome easter eggs and it really shows with this next weapon known as the Redundant Savvy Feebert. The weapon is a Hyperion legendary shotgun that drops from a rare enemy spawn known as Wick and Warty, which is clearly a reference to the TV show Rick and Morty. So much so that the enemies even look and sound similar to Rick and Morty and being a huge fan of the show, it's really awesome to see this easter egg in the game. Anyway, to get this weapon, you want to go to the Electra City region of Promethea. Once here, you want to head over to this location on the map, and it's here where Wick and Warty has a chance to spawn. Now obviously, if they don't spawn here, simply reload the game and head back, and hopefully you'll eventually get them to spawn, but then you'll have to fight them. Warty is very easy to kill and doesn't have much health, but Wick on the other hand will keep teleporting, so you will have to hunt him down a little bit. Anyway, once you have killed Wick, he has a chance to drop the Redundant Savvy Feebert. The weapon itself is actually pretty decent. It has decent stats across the board with additional effects of boosted weapon damage, critical hit damage, weapon shield capacity, and weapon accuracy. And also, because it's Hyperion, 
it has a shield on the gun when aiming down sights that can reflect bullets when hit. Overall, it's a decent legendary weapon and definitely one for you collectors out there. For the next weapon on this list, we have the Shocking 9V. This weapon is a legendary dial pistol that always comes with the shock elemental effect and will always have a damage modifier of times 3 but the rest of its stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level. What makes this weapon unique though is the burst pattern. It shoots 6 bullets for the price of 3 and shoots them in a V shape. Because of this it makes it a very powerful weapon to use. To get this weapon you'll want to go to the Meridian Complex in Promethea and head over to this location. It's here where you can get a quest known as Kill Killer Vault. Now because I already accepted it when I wasn't recording, it's not here for me anymore. But go here and the quest should be available from the board on the pillar. Anyway, you'll want to make your way through this quest line because at the very end of this, you get to fight a boss known as Killer Vault. And it's here where the Shocking 9 Vault has a chance to spawn. It took us about 3 tries to get this weapon and just to mention, you do have to complete the quest before you can continue farming this guy. Overall, the weapon is very powerful and has additional effects of boosted critical hit damage and also has a 2.2 and 5 times weapon zoom. Yet another early game legendary weapon you can obtain is known as the Mind Killer. The Mind Killer is a legendary Maliwan shotgun that drops from the boss fight known as Mouthpiece. And of course, Mouthpiece is one of the first main boss fights you will come across, so it will be very easy for you to farm this. The weapon itself has a flavor text that states, I must not fear. Fear is the Mind Killer, and also boasts additional effects of boosted weapon damage and weapon charge speed. The gun also shoots out a sound blast of 9 pellets per shot, similar to that of Mouthpiece himself, and when zoomed in, it packs those 9 bullets into a tighter circle for better accuracy. As far as legendary weapons go, it's pretty decent and definitely a great weapon to pick up early game. Next up, we have a Maliwan SMG known as the Westergun. The Westergun can switch between two elemental types. The variants that I got in this was the Shock and Radiation elements, but for you, this may be different. As far as SMGs go, this is actually pretty damn powerful. It has a decent fire rate and has additional effects of boosted splash damage radius and a 3.3 times weapon zoom. And of course, most of the default stats are subject to change depending on the weapon's level. The flavor text for this weapon is, I believe you, but my Tommy gun don't, which is a reference to the movie Home Alone. We are looking for a young man. All right, I believe you. But my Tommy gun don't. To get this weapon, you'll need to have visited the planet of Athenus and also got the character known as Ava on board Sanctuary 3. This happens naturally through the main story, but once you do have Ava on board Sanctuary, you can then get a side quest from her known as Invasion of Privacy. And it's at the end of this quest where you will come across an enemy known as Beans. Beans is the guy who has a chance to drop the legendary Wester gun. Now again, if you kill him and you don't get the weapon, you do need to complete the quest before you can continue to farm for this. And just for reference, here is the location of where he will spawn on Athena's in comparison to your spawn location. Returning from previous Borderlands games, we have the legendary Lyuda and TK Baja's Wave Gun. I managed to get both of these from a boss fight known as Captain Traunt that you will come across during the main quest line on the planet of Athenas. Once you complete the main quest here, he will then become farmable and there's a spawn point just above where you fight him, so he's very easy to farm. Again, for me, the first legendary he dropped was the Lyuda, which is a fan favorite weapon from Borderlands 2 and is extremely powerful. The weapon itself is a Vladar sniper that has the flavor text Man Killer, which has the unique ability that allows it to shoot one projectile that splits into three projectiles on a horizontal plane. And because of the variant I ended up getting, which was the annexed Vicious Lyuda, it gave the weapon a times two modifier, which allowed me to shoot six projectiles for the price of two bullets, making this gun one of the most powerful weapons I currently have. Like seriously, this gun is amazing. It also has additional effects of boosted critical hit damage, 
weapon accuracy and fire rate, consumes 2 ammo per shot, and also has a 9.9 times weapon zoom. In addition to this, when farming him, I also got TK Baja's Shockwave, which is a legendary Jacob shotgun that does shock elemental damage. The flavor text for this one is Ride the Wave Dude, which offers the unique ability to fire blue projectiles in a horizontal line that also oscillate up and down and ricochet off walls. The weapon also offers boosted critical hit damage, weapon accuracy, and fire rate. Both of these weapons are great, but one thing that I am uncertain of is whether or not Captain Traunt is guaranteed to drop these specific weapons, or if he just drops random legendaries. Either way, he is very easy to farm and has pretty good drop rates, so you're bound to get some cool legendaries from him. Yet again, we have multiple legendaries in one location. This time, it's the Handsome Jackhammer and two legendary grenade mods known as the Quasar and Trooper's Organ. All of these drop for me on the planet of Athenus. If you head over to this location on the map, you will come across one of Sir Hammerlock's legendary hunt crew challenges that task you to kill a creature known as the Trooper Cabrach. Once killed, he has a chance to drop some legendary items. His main one is the grenade mod known as Trooper's Organ, which is a homing grenade that essentially sucks the life out of your enemies with its life drain effect. The second one I got was the legendary Quasar grenade mod, which is a returning grenade from Borderlands 2, and yet another homing grenade that sticks to the target and does continuous shock damage. And then the third drop I got was the Handsome Jackhammer. The Handsome Jackhammer is manufactured by Hyperion, and as many of you will know, this means that it has that pop-out shield that activates when aiming down sights. The weapon also has two special effects. The first is that when thrown, it bounces around like a bouncing Betty, while also shooting and doing explosive damage each time it hits the ground. And the second special effect is the fact that the gun will randomly at times speak to you in Handsome Jack's voice, which is really cool. Overall, as far as SMGs go, it's pretty decent. And again, I'm uncertain if this weapon in particular is a guaranteed drop from the Trooper Cabrach, but either way, he's easy to farm, offers random legendary weapons, and also has the main grenade mod drop of the Trooper's organ. Now this is one of the weirder guns in Borderlands 3, and it's known as the Predatory Lending. It's manufactured by Hyperion and has the flavor text, bullets are cheap, but not that cheap, which gives it the unique ability to quite literally cost money to shoot each shot. That's right, every time you shoot a bullet, it costs $1, which is absolutely insane and more of a collector's item as opposed to something you would use normally. To get this gun, you'll need to be in the Drought region on the planet of Pandora. If you head over to this location on the map, you'll come across another one of Sir Hamalak's legendary hunt crew challenges, and in this case, it will task you to kill a creature known as the Lavender Crawley, and it's here where this legendary weapon has a chance to spawn. Again, the weapon is Hyperion, which means that it does come with that pop-out shield when aiming down sights, and also offers additional effects of boosted weapon damage, critical hit damage and weapon shield capacity. But all of that combined just isn't worth using the gun for the fact that it costs money to use. Either way, it's a collector's item and a legendary weapon that some of you guys out there may want to obtain. And for the final few legendaries of the video, we have the Maliwan Shredder Fire and the TDR Smart Gun XXL. Both of these spawn from Gigamind, which is a boss fight during the main quest line on the planet of Promethea, so this is something that you will naturally come across. However, if you do want to continue farming Gigamind, again, you do have to complete the main quest line. And then from there, you can simply head over to this location on the map where he spawns and start farming him. His main legendary weapon drop is the Smart Gun Double XL, which when reloaded and thrown, turns into a brain turret on the ground that also shoots at enemies, which again, is absolutely insane. The gun also features an alien weapon barrel that gives the weapon a 100% increase in damage, making this a very viable and gimmicky legendary to use. The next weapon I got from here was the Shredder Fire, and I have to say, this thing is an absolute melt machine. 
The flavor text for the weapon is Speed Kills, which offers the unique ability of a greatly decreased spawn time, extremely high firing speed, and very large capacity. And that combined with its already high fire rate of 16.98 makes this weapon very, very powerful. The version I ended up getting was corrosive, but it is possible to get different elemental types. And again, this one for me was one of the more powerful legendaries listed in this video. And that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. And if you're into this kind of content, why not subscribe? I'll be doing a ton more Borderlands 3 top 10 videos, and this is just the beginning of what's to come. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.